Hi everyone, Cam here for Yes Auto, and I'm so excited to drive the car I have today. It is the Porsche Boxster GTS 4 litre. Now this may look like just a normal Porsche Boxster, but it's a very special car because this generation of Boxster and Cayman, the 718, controversially ditched a flat six motor and went to a flat four, and it sounded rubbish. But the GTS rectifies everything because there's a little badge down here that says four litre, and that means four litre flat six. And I'm going to drive it today and just see if it's as special as I'm expecting it to be. So before I get into the review, remember to hit the like and subscribe for more awesome videos and videos of me getting excited about Porsches right here. I would usually go through the visual differences between the Boxster GTS 4 litre and the previous version, the 2.5. However, there aren't that many differences in all fairness. The front end is pretty much exactly the same. And hey, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It is a very, very good looking car. And I really love the little fins that come down here as well that just adds a little bit of dynamicism to what is a relatively basic design. Now we've got new wheels on this one here. Uh, now we've got them in the matte black, but you can get them in silver. You can also get them in gold as well. I think red and gold or black and gold would look absolutely stunning. I was a bit of a fan of blue and gold, but it was a bit too Subaru-y. Now it also says GTS 4 litre down the side and you don't have that on the other car. So you can tell everybody that you waited and saved for the car with the better engine. Well, I think it has a better engine. I don't know yet because I've not driven it. At the back, we actually have a slightly different design. The old GTS had centrally mounted twin exhausts, where these ones are separated in this rather lovely yet yeah, plastic diffuser. Overall, though, it is a very good looking car. And again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Boxster and Cayman were already very smart looking things indeed. Now, this is a two-seater sports car, so you probably think that it's absolutely rubbish when it comes to practicality, but you'd be sort of wrong. Anyway, we have 150 litres of storage at the front of the car, and it's so impressive because it's a really deep boot, front boot, fruit, frunk, that's what they call it in America. You've got a really deep frunk here, and I think you could probably fit a decent-sized suitcase in there, definitely massive overnight bags if you wanted to stay for a weekend away in the south of France or maybe even a week if you really cram stuff in there. But it's not just the front boot, there's also one in the back. Remember, we've got a mid-engine car here. This isn't like the 911 of where it's rear-engined. So if we add this one in to the mix, which isn't nearly as deep, we actually get a total storage capacity of 270 litres, which is seriously impressive. So you could probably fit a relatively, maybe a medium sized suitcase in the front and then a couple of overnight bags in the back. And you're ready for a week away in the south of France when COVID is over. Or you could go to Italy again when, when COVID's over. We can't pop the engine cover on the GTS, so I'll have to run over the specs in voiceover. As the name suggests, the GTS is powered by a 4-litre, naturally aspirated, yes, flat 6 producing 394 brake horsepower and 420 newton metres of torque. It's not the same 4-litre as the 911 GT3, but instead it's a de-turboed and bored out 3-litre from the base 911. It's connected up to a 6-speed manual as standard, but you can opt for a 7-speed PDK if you fancy it and it'll go from zero to 62 miles an hour in four and a half seconds. So this four litre is shaping up to be quite the upgrade over the old 2.5 motor. We've got an extra 30 brake horsepower over the old GTS and only 20 less than the limited run special edition Boxster Spider. So 
On to the interior. What's it like compared to the old ones? Well, it's not all that different really. And this is where the GTS starts to feel a little bit on the old side. So while you've got a new motor, technically this is a facelift, a lightly updated version of the base 718. So we've got the same infotainment system, which is starting to feel a little bit on the old side now, but hey, it comes with Apple CarPlay. So you'll probably do what I do, just plug your phone in and go. Uh, and we also have a mostly analog instrument cluster. We've got a small digital dial on the right hand side, but it's, it's mainly analog. Now, a lot of Porsche purists actually like this. The 911 has moved over to a mostly digital system where you've got two digital panels either side of an analog rev counter. The Taycan is completely digital, but Porsches are all about driving, the analog driving experience. And when you've got good old fashioned analog dials, that seems to tick a lot of boxes. So while it might seem like a bit of a step behind, I'm sure a lot of people will, will love that. And then we get on to the overall interior quality itself. It is stunning in here. Lovely leather. We've got carbon fiber in this model. Yes, it's an optional extra and it's in a pricey one as well. But we've got Alcantara seats, which are standard in this model. Everything just feels so beautifully put together. It's not the most, it's not going to make you your jaw drop, but it just feels like a good, solid product. Gone are the days of where sports cars are really flimsily made and are going to fall apart. This thing feels like it could withstand a nuclear apocalypse. So while we've got two big boots either side, of us here in the cabin, the actual storage isn't all that great. So there's a relatively small glove compartment, which does the job, got our owner's manual in there. And above that, we've got two cup holders, which are really neatly hidden away. So I can just ping them out like that and close that up. Come on, there we go. The only problem is they're not actually very good because they're very shallow. So if you've got a medium or large size drink, it's just going to fall over when you're in the corners. Yes, you can adjust them, but the grip is a bit rubbish. And again, it's too shallow. So we've got those. Let's tuck them away. We've also got a very small storage tray in the center console with a USB connector, not USB-C, just good old fashioned USB. Uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> not, not a lot of other places to go and store stuff, but I guess it's not the end of the world, bearing in mind you could just use the frunk or the boot. So let's get on to the price. How much does the Boxster GTS cost? Well, it is quite expensive. The Boxster, you're looking at around 67,000 pounds. And if you go for the Cayman, the hardtop, that's about 65,000. So if you don't want the wind in your hair, the Cayman is probably the one to go for. But the way to think about it is this, when the GT4 was available and the Spyder, they were about £10,000 more. And are you getting a massively different experience to the GT4 or the Spyder? I don't think you'd be able to really know unless you did a back-to-back -back drive of them and knew each car inside and out. This really is the real deal. Of course, those are just the starting prices of the car. This is Porsche, after all, there is an extensive options list. And I just wanted to go through some of them with you just to show how much money you can spend on what is meant to be a cheap-ish Porsche. So if you want uh, full bucket seats, £3,788. If you want a PDK gearbox, £2,303. I've not really figured out why Porsche's pricing is so specific. If you know why, let me know down in the comments because I've been baffled for years by it now. Carbon ceramic brakes. We don't have them on this version, but if you're going to be tracking your car and you want to get heat into your brakes quickly and use them lap after lap after lap, £5,177. The carbon pack that we've got in here with the bit of leather at the side, £1,049. But thank goodness if you want stitching in the same color as the car, it's a free option. Right, enough of that. Let's go and take this out for a spin.
Now the Boxster GTS is all about driving, so I'm not going to do any gimmicks. I'm not going to do any crazy zero to 60 challenges. We're just going to go for a drive. Oh, how I have missed that sound so much. I really don't know how you could go back to the flat four of the old car after going in this. The only thing you really want to do is listen to the engine. This car makes such a glorious sound when you get up to 8,000 RPM, but it's very hard to access it because the gearing is so long. And as soon as you get up towards five, six, 7,000 RPM, you're breaking the speed limit. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a clear stretch of road now. Let's have a listen. <laughs> oh my goodness, what an addictive sound. What an utterly addictive noise. Whoever says sound is irrelevant when it comes to enjoying a car and enjoying the drive, is just wrong. If you had a bad day at work, you could just get in this and just go for an immense drive and I'd be so immensely jealous of you. And what's amazing is that although the gearing is long, the engine is so torquey. It's incredible for a motor that's naturally aspirated to have this much torque because it feels like no matter what gear I'm in, I could be in, I could be in third, which is a really long gear in this car. And there's power all the way through the rev range. So enough about the noise for now, let's talk about what else is great about the GTS. The steering, oh my goodness. This, the steering in here is, is one of the best electric racks I, I've ever experienced. And I also said that about the 911 Turbo S. In fact, if you wanna watch my video on that, click the link in the top right hand corner. So the steering in this, like the 911, uses an electric rack. So, Typically, that robs a lot of feel, and you can make electric racks really direct, but they can feel a little bit on the numb side. Not in here, this is just so brilliantly engineered. I can feel all the vibrations through the road surface. I'm on a really bumpy, twisty road at the moment, and the car is riding the bump so well. <laughs> and I can feel all of that through the steering wheel, so I can really position this car with confidence. It just feels like a really back to basic sports car, which is all about the driving. I'm just so amazed at what a brilliant driver's car this is. You can really easily daily this car. It's, it's so accessible. It smooths out a lot of bumps and the ones it doesn't smooth out, it rides over beautifully. I, I could quite easily do a very long car journey in this and not be bored of it. And you know what, it's got surprisingly good fuel economy as well. So one of my colleagues drove it up to our film location this morning and he got over 30 mpg from a naturally aspirated flat six engine. So we do have different driving modes. We've got normal, which I'm in now, which quietens the exhaust down. The throttle response isn't quite as severe. It's still a great driver's car in, in normal mode, but it's just a little less hardcore. We've then got Sport, which opens the valves up and makes it sound even better. Sport Plus reduces some of the driver assistance. And I would, I would say be careful. If you put it in Sport Plus, be careful driving it on a road because it is so torquey and so powerful, the back will want to step out. At this point, I'd normally say, here are three things I like and three things I don't like. So three things I like, that the sound of the engine, oh, it's just, I'm so happy it's back. I'm so happy we've got a flat six back in a Porsche sports car. Whoa, glorious sound, I adore it. Number two is the steering. Great steering, uh, it's, it just feels like a proper driver's car. And the third thing I like about it other than the immensely good ride and the great gear change. It's just how usable it is. And three things I don't like. Gearing's a bit long. The infotainment is starting to feel a little bit out of date. I think that's about it, really. I love everything else about it. 
But if the £65,000 price tag sounds a little bit too much, why not head over to yesauto.com because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing when I get home tonight and checking out all the deals that we've got on new and, for me, used Porsche Boxsters or Caymans, the hardtop version. You know, there are some cars, when you experience them for the first time, once is enough. A lot of supercars are like that. You drive them once and you go, that was brilliant. I've had my fill. I can go back to driving my 3 Series now or whatever. But this is the kind of car you don't want to get out. You just want to keep driving it all day.